Lequel des quatre fantastiques Es-tu Je suis l'homme élastique Qui s'éloignait d'un claquement Reprend sa place en un instant Hi guys and welcome back to my channel My name is Elle Berson If you are new here and if you are not Welcome back So I recently got back from a trip to France where I spent most of my time actually in Paris. And while I was there, I did a lot of thrifting and vintage shopping. I didn't actually do much regular shopping now that I think about it, but yeah, Paris is amazing for the thrifting and vintage designer scene. So I got some really good things, so I thought I would do a bit of a haul today. I also thought I would mention that I'm going to tell you the prices of what I paid for things because I watched a lot of these videos before I went to kind of get inspiration of where to go and how to look for things and no one was really mentioning the prices, especially of designer things, which is kind of frustrating if you're doing a bit of research and no one's no one's telling you how much you're actually spending. It does help to have an idea of what you should expect to spend. I'm the kind of person who really likes fashion, but I wouldn't pay full price and I wouldn't buy any designer wear new. The thing I really like about thrifting and vintage shopping is that you usually get something a bit more unique than if you just buy off the rack. I will start with my thrifting finds and then I will move on to my vintage stuff and I'll try to tell you where I got everything and if I bargained how I bargained. With that in mind let's get on with the video. The first thrifting find that I got was in this shop called Get A Sell. I will write all of the places in the description below. These secondhand stores are all over Paris. I don't even know how many there are. I went into maybe four different ones. They range in size. I'd say the ones around Montmartre area I found to be the best and there's two right next to each other. The first thing I got is the least glamorous thing that I got and it's this Quechua jacket. It is a waterproof kind of hiking jacket and I personally find if I'm thrifting the best things to look for are the things that you can wear oversized and the things that don't need to be a perfect fit because then you can get away with like sizing up a bit more. So yeah, this is a large, so on me it's like really oversized. I love that inside has this different detailing so you could kind of wear it as like a weekend cool piece or I could actually wear it hiking. And this is actually a really good hiking brand. And the best part about it was that it was five euros. Cute, casual, like rain jackety kind of piece. That was my first find and I was pretty excited about it to be honest. As you'll notice I have quite a coat obsession. Coats are a thing that I think you can do really well thrifting for because if you can find something that's like a really good quality you can really save yourself some money. So the second one I got is this. It's kind of like a, do you know whether you can tell it's like a grey speckle. So it's just like a super practical um, double breasted coat. It is, I think, 60% wool. I don't know how you would say this. What do you say? Like a high, a high wool blend? Does that, is that right? And this one was also from the same store and it was 10 euro. It's definitely a French brand, but I don't know how to pronounce it. It'll write it on the screen. Um, it needs a little bit of fixing up. One of the buttons has fallen off, but it came with spare buttons. It's a bit bigger as well, so I thought it would be good for when it's when I'm going somewhere really cold, like for the north in Europe, and I need to layer, because the problem is, is a lot of the coats that I own, because I'm Australian living in Spain, I don't usually need to layer that much, so that when I layer them, it gets really ugh, tight and claustrophobic. So yeah, this is a bit better for those kind of situations. And the next kind of thrifting buy I got was this. So I have been chasing something corduroy all like, oh winter, it's winter the belly started, but like since the season started. And then I was in, I went into another, get us, I don't know how to pronounce that so. And there was a velvet jacket, like blazer, which was really cute and this. And by that stage I was like, my bags are full, so I could only take one. But yeah, I decided to go with this because I thought it was really cool how the detailing on the sleeve is, it's like longer on this edge. It's lined, it's also from a French brand, Moloco. Um, I don't know that it's super expensive, it was 10 euros 
thrifting and then it has a zip at the front but it also these little crustums. Mm, I thought maybe not in the heart of winter but kind of as like a spring throw on blazer kind of jacket. So far I've only worn it once over the top of a couple other things and I thought it looked really cute. And I'm really into this oversized look with like tighter things underneath at the moment. So yeah, that's that. Oh, and it has pockets. I think they all have pockets. I don't know whether you can tell that it's even caught in this because everything's so dark, but yeah. That's kind of what it looks like. <laughs> And Cole's actually surprisingly warm. So now I'm going to transition into the vintage stuff, but I thought I would just show you one cute little thing that I got. So I don't know why, I've never seen this at other flea markets, well maybe not to the extent, but in Paris, and actually in France in general, there were always these little badge stores that had heaps of like really old school badges, I guess. So I got these two for one euro each at... I definitely can't say this. Les pousses, les pousses, um, marché, les pousses. The oldest flea market in Paris. Je n'ai pas les par français. We got this little one and this one. And then I actually got three more in Bordeaux and I have somehow misplaced them while unpacking. They are kind of all of the same vein and I thought I would just put them on like different coats or like maybe my denim jacket or something and they get a crazy, crazy aunt denim jacket. And now we get on to the really fun stuff. So my first big find was this Christian Dior silk scarf. Whee! from 1960. I have been dying to get my hands on a beautiful designer scarf for a really long time and I've looked at them actually in Paris before and other places and I've just never found anything that I loved enough to spend the money on. And this one, I, I am a 60s girl. I love anything 60s. As soon as I saw this one, I could tell that it was 60s. And then when I was talking to the guy about it and then I did some research online. So I actually went into the store and talked to him about a few things and then left and I find that that's really the best thing to do because um, then you can do a bit of research and see if it's genuine and make sure you check because sometimes even if you know the brand things change from decade to decade so you should check online and see what styles were in and this is like the only era I think that they did this kind of like transitional color scarf and I love it. The other ones we saw were anywhere between 100 euros and more than 200 and that. This one was marked as, I think they had it at 120. And then I got it for 90 euros in cash. You can ask them what their best price is. It's definitely worth asking and usually if you're gonna buy a few things you might be able to get a better deal but I really only wanted this from that store. But yeah, often if you offer cash, you will also get it at a reduced price. But oh, it's beautiful, I love it. I'm actually like scared of even holding it at the moment. This is my baby. So I'd say that I'm not really a handbag person, generally speaking. I'm more into shoes. I have a problem with shoes, probably is what I should say. But I have been looking for a new handbag for a while now. I've been waiting until I went to Paris so that I could check out um, the vintage handbags. Because I find that a lot of new handbags, unless you're willing to spend like, literally a thousand euros or more on them, they often are a bit uh, badly finished. The finishings on them are never that nice and yeah, I don't know. It seems like even spending a few hundred euros is a lot of money to spend on something if you don't love it. I went into a lot of vintage stores that had handbags in the market, the flea market, the same flea market that I cannot pronounce and I will not pronounce again. And I ended up stumbling across these two in the same place, luckily enough. So this one I love because this is actually the style I've been looking for for ages and I find that modern ones have really ugly, when they do this metal trimming they're never very nice. Um, this one's gold plated and it's from the 1960s, I'm not 100% sure exactly which year. It has this beautiful like detailing here with a pressed up finishing and inside, I don't know if you can see, it has like a purse like snap lock which I just put my cards in when I'm going out and there's a little pocket in the front where I could put coins or like a lipstick or something else and then it's just like kind of a bucket it fits my 
small camera or my film camera in it and my phone and a few other things. It's a really good size for everyday use. And then I'm still getting the hang of this fastening. It also has this. And then I've just been wearing it across body. It is crocodile leather, which I would never buy new. Um, I would only buy something like that second hand. But yeah, second hand, I love it. It's beautiful. It's really nice. I really love it. And then I also got this clutch, which I fell in love with because it's so worn and so, I mean, not worn out, it doesn't look bad, but like, it's the leather is so soft. It's this little clutch and it's got this here and the little tie down here. It's all leather. And it is from Bottega Benetta. And these Italian handbags, if you were to buy one new now as a clutch, you're gonna set yourself back like a thousand euros or more. And inside is lined. I still have my flea market little map in there. Um, and then it's got a little zip. And I just, I really fell in love with this. And because I bought both, she, <laughs> she originally had the crocodile leather one valued at 250 euros and this one she immediately told me her best price for this one was 150 euros I'm not really sure why she went straight to her best price and then I managed to get both of them for 300 euros and I walked away um, to get cash out and had a big think of it and I was so in love with both of them that I decided to just bite a bullet and get two handbags and spend the 300 euros but yeah, I do not have any regrets and I have looked online since at other handbags that I was looking at and knew I wasn't really looking at anything for less than 300 euros and for much lower quality. So definitely go to the flea market that is well worth the trip. The last thing that I wanted to show you, I got from this store called Thank God I'm a VIP, which is a horrible name for a store. It's really well curated, it's very well organized, it's not the kind of place you can really bargain with them. And they have like a variety, it's not all designer, they have designer and they have normal stuff. I swear to God they have the coolest pants in the world, and if I hadn't have already bought as much as I had, I probably would have tried on all the pants in the store until I found a pair that fit. But yeah, I'd kind of like shopped myself out by this stage and ended up only getting this leather belt. And this belt is Yves Saint Laurent from 1970 or 1970 something. And I immediately when I walked into the store, I saw it in the cabinet, I fell in love with it, and then I checked everything about it and Googled it and everything else and bought it. And this one was 70 euros. They had a lot of really, really cute belts, but this was just so much more unique and I'm personally not the kind of person who likes a label on something obviously like this one has got the Yves Saint Laurent on the inside but I really am not into big branding that's why I loved all of the things that I got this belt uh, I love I wore yesterday for the first time and I'm very happy with my purchase I kind of can just like wear it mid waist and with high waisted jeans is perfect but yeah it's beautiful and I love red I really love red and I think this is quite unique so yeah that's the last thing I got if you want easy vintage shopping thank god I'm a VIP is perfect because you can go through by color find the sizes and then go try things on uh, it's not as much fun as going to the flea markets, but yeah, they do have a lot of really beautiful things um, and they've all been cared for and kept really well and curated properly. So it is a really nice store. I just think that without the hunt, it loses a bit of the fun. But yeah, I do really love that belt. So hey. Anyway, that is all of my haul from like thrifting and vintage Paris. I do also have a pharmacy haul coming up, but I think I'm going to do it after I've tested the products so I can tell you what I think. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe, give me a like, and put on the bell for notifications. And if you have any tips for vintage and thrifting in Spain, please let me know in the comments below because I would love to do a bit of thrifting and vintage shopping in Spain, but thus far I haven't really found that much useful information on it. So yeah, I would love to know your thoughts in the comments below. Otherwise, I will see you all very soon. Au
en issue.